Angling is a series of choices from an infinite number of options. Some simple, like what's your target species, to the complexities of understanding fish location on a seasonal basis. Then there's the myriad of presentation options. It's as mental of a game as physical. Each challenge is different, but the basic process remains the same. For angling is like solving a living, breathing puzzle. And to see the big picture, you need the fishing edge. Look at the size of that Wow. Look at the size of that pike. Oh, rolled on it, man. Oh, right there. <laughs> Decent. They're all good, Jim. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's, That's what I'm talking tank. about. You just, would just suspend. Like, yeah. like that. Right at the end of the cast, man. I mean. The thing is, is what you do is minimize the uh, spooking factor. Fish on. There we go. Yeah, you're on the Nicer really one here, man. Oh, that's a pig. Yeah, <laughs> that is a big boy. Right oh. now, Ryan and I are uh, probably doing what I, out of any type of style of fishing, I probably enjoy the most. And what it is is topwater fishing, but topwater fishing with. Uh, for smallmouth bass. You know, we live up in the North Country and we have tremendous populations of uh, smallmouths in our lakes. And we're gonna look at a style of lure that can be really, uh, sort of almost, it's a forgotten lure and it's called the prop bait. And right now we're in really prime time conditions for propping smallmouth bass. Look at that guy. Look at that. Beautiful fish. You know, right now we're fishing with uh, a new bait, this is called the X-Rep uh, Prop. And uh, it's got some unique characteristics to it. It's got a long cast uh, weight transfer system in it for casting, counter rotating blades and a really beautiful finish. Not to mention really, really good black nickel hooks. But the beauty of a, of a prop bait is it's a minnow bait on the surface and it's absolutely versatile. You can fish it nearly everywhere, everywhere except maybe just the thickest um, emergent vegetation. I'm talking wood, rocks, big point extensions, heavy weed beds, casting it into the pockets in the weeds. Uh, it's incredibly effective in uh, almost all habitats, which is why it's so popular throughout the country. But it, it is really fun fishing when it happens. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, when conditions get like this, that fishing can get really tough. And the odd thing is, it can be until you throw, put the right presentation on, especially when these fish get tuned in. When they get really feeding on bugs really hard, it's amazing. You know, there's no fish here, and then you pick up a topwater bait, and they're everywhere. Prime time for topwater, though. They're scattered. You can just fan cast in an area and call these fish in. It's not like they're wadded up on a specific edge where you're making precise casts. You're covering water. He was right there. One thing that's really critical for uh, prop bait fishing, and actually almost any type of topwater fishing, is I think is weather. And what we've actually had, it's really, really humid out. We've had like three or four really warm days. Actually, this water temperature, we were out here a couple of days ago, and the water temperature has probably warmed up six degrees from that time. So we're on a warming trend right now. And it seems like that can really make a difference. I mean, it, it's sort of amazing on how fast the fish can change, you know, even from a couple of days, but even over the course of one day, from the morning to the afternoon, a lot of times it'll make the difference. You, you'll be throwing toppers in, in the morning, you won't see anything. You get a little bit of warmth energy into the system. The bugs start moving everything and the fish start hitting uh, top water baits in the afternoon or prop baits in the afternoon. Look at right there. Here what? she comes. Here she comes. Oh yeah, look at her. I mean, talk Big about one. talk about a, a natural appeal. Big one. Oh, she wants it so bad. Oh, I saw her lip smacking. <laughs> I saw her li lips actually smacking. It's great from the back of the boat, kind of as a co-angler too. 
when Jim is heading in a certain direction, I see his heading, the direction in which he's going on these structures, and then I can gauge where I want to make a cast. Now today it doesn't matter because these fish are spread all, all across this structure, but on a lot of days it does matter when they're on specific breaks, tight edges along the rock structure, or right on the very absolute peaks of these structures, that's where I want to place my cast. So having waypoint sharing, having a common operating picture is a huge advantage. There he is. Another one. You see him? <laughs> you see him? He came up and I like the way he came in and wolf the wolf did. He came in horizontally. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffix 832. Always use the best line. Really? You're seriously just going to leave me in here? Yeah, I'm fishing deep today, Ike. Are you kidding me? These are perfect conditions for pulling big bass out of heavy cover. Yeah? Heck yeah! Try one of these weedless wacky jigs. All right, yeah. It, it has an offset hook and stainless steel weed guard. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Sorry, Ike. Flip it in there, and it's wacky action. We'll have you pulling out one fat bass after another. Please! I can't say anything. Are you finding it harder and harder to spend time with your family? All you need is the right place to reconnect. <laughs> Big walleye, Dad. Here we go. This is fun. <laughs> Northwest Ontario, your place to reconnect. Closed captioning provided by Freebill. You know, one thing you look at, the boy, he's got a buddy with him, Ryan. All right, I'm yeah. out there. He's got a buddy with him. There you go. Come here. Come here, buddy. Let's grab this little nipper. Come here. Oh, perfect. Perfect. You know, one thing about fishing topwater baits like this is, is tweaking your retrieve and fine tuning it based on what the fish are willing to bite on. And that sort of depends on the, you know, the attitude of the fish. Right now it's uh, relatively early in the morning. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, it still seems like the fish are pretty tentative where we have to let the bait sit there for a period of time to uh, get the fish to hit the bait. A lot of times when they're super active, I mean, you'll hit the, you know, you can fish the bait, you know, with real fast uh, ripping retrieve and the fish will hit it. And sometimes, a lot of times, what you have to do with this bait is let it sit for a long period of time. Sometimes we just cast it out and don't even move the bait. Well, you know, when I pitch this bait out, it's got a long cast mechanism. I can make a real, real long cast. But when the bait is out on the end of the cast, a lot of times what I'm going to do is use an upward swing like this. And it rips and the bait goes subsurface and comes back up. Rip, then comes back up. But as the bait gets closer to the boat a lot of times what I'm going to do I get about halfway back a lot of times I'll drop my rod tip close to the water to maintain that even sort of cadence that rip subsurface rip then pause rip and pause a uh, largemouth bass fisherman actually fish this bait with a completely different retrieve what you'll do is pitch it out and reel it in real real slow just a straight retrieve real real slow with those blades going up 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 there you go. Oh, get him. Got him. Got yeah. him. There you go. <laughs> that fish came up, and he missed the bait. And I, I literally just stopped the bait in its tracks, and he came back and, and whacked it. Nice little nipper. There you go. 
Yeah, you know, as, as James was saying, these fish do have a tendency to get really tuned in when they got multiple feeding options. Now, out here right now, we got this bug hatch going on. But what that does is it brings minnows up toward the surface, and a smallmouth bass, when given the option of eating a small you know, fly or a big minnow, is going to choose a, a big minnow if you just look at the, the energy that they expend and the energy they take in. Now, if you have confidence fishing baits like husky jerks, x wraps, surface baits like an original floater, that's what you're fishing with a prop bait like this. It's simply a minnow bait fished on the surface, and there's nothing more appealing to fish that are hunting than a dying minnow. Whoop, the, there you go, oh, Jim. Big Another one. one. Wow, that's a big sucker there. Man. Come here. Look at that guy. Wow, I mean, he just powdered, powdered the bait. You can see this guy here. Wow, look at that guy. That's what I mean. Ooh, look, at <laughs> look at that guy there. That's a beautiful smallmouth bass. Look at that thing. Gorgeous fish. Uh, there we go. Yeah, he's <laughs> got to be 20 something inches. I mean, that's a big smallmouth. Look at that. For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are, but now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Hummingbird can communicate with each other, so you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Hummingbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. Why take chances with your engines? Protect them from neglect, wear, and tear the easy way with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam helps to maintain top engine performance by removing harmful deposit buildup from your engine and fuel system. Control moisture and gas and diesel. Stabilize fuel for up to two years and lubricate your engines to start easier, run cooler, and last longer. Trust all your engines to Seafoam Motor Treatment, the choice of mechanics for over 70 years. And there she is. First Mercury. 154 stroke, the lightweight heavyweight. And she comes with all this. Say hi to Wendy from customer support. She's always there to help. Jerry from product testing, he dishes out the torture. They can take it. Good. And Tim from design, he never misses a detail. Obsessed with quality. Bobby, prop engineer, he turns horsepower into performance. This is George. From it's good to have Mercury Networks. behind you. Meet the rest of the team at mercurymarine.com. You're going to need to pick a boat. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. What's really interesting about prop baits in comparison with a lot of the other topwater lures, whether it be a popper uh, or a, uh, even a jump bait, like a skitter walk or a walk the dog bait, these are really good baits in wind. You get a little bit of chop, these will keep on catching fish, while those other baits have the tendency to really lose their effectiveness because you rip it, the bait goes down a little bit in the water column, you got the both blades, it's putting out a lot of flash and vibration, and it seems like it'll, it just works better when you got chop on the water. Let's move to the next spot. We've actually sort of uh, circled this hump up on the top of it as well as all the way around the perimeter. What we're gonna do is move in to another little spot just in from us. And we'll see what's on that particular spot. Here we go. You know, one thing that's really incredible uh, these days is mapping programs. And we look at this map here, and I'll show you something, what's going on and where, where we're at right now, because we were talking about uh, this is the post-spawn period. And what I want to show you is where the fish came from and where they're at now. Right now, we're on a uh, in an offshore structure. This is the top of it. You can see the this is the high spot all the way around here. But when I zoom out, a lot of these fish spawned on the real shallow water flats up in here. 
And as these fish uh, move into their summer pattern, what they're going to do is move to these offshore re uh, reef systems. And there's weed beds all in between here like that. And this is a really big structure. This is a classic type of spot that uh, would really hold a lot of fish. Smallmouth bass move in big packs. So you get into a region of the lake where there's fish, and there's a lot of them. They almost move like walleyes. So every one of these uh, sunken humps out in this area probably will have bass on them. This particular map is a, a Lake Master's uh, chip. And what I've done is actually went to the depth highlight, and I can actually highlight a specific depth range. Right now, I have a depth highlight at four feet plus four feet. So what it is between four and eight foot of water is going to be bright green. And you can see that coming into play on where I'm coming up on this next hump here. And I can adjust that based on the fishing conditions that I happen to be uh, faced with uh, for the day. You know, I adjust this all the time, depending if I'm fishing for walleyes, smallmouth bass like we are, muskies, I may just uh, adjust that. If we're fishing deep pumps, I may have it set for 25 foot of water for walleyes. But it's a really unbelievable tool. Once you get used to using this and out on the water and the efficiency of it, it's amazing because it really focuses you know, your, once you start to, uh, catching fish and developing patterns, it just speeds the process to find the next spot. So the GPS is huge in helping us identify where we're going to go park the boat and start fishing, finding these, these isolated rock humps. There's one right there. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's what I'm talking tanker, about. Yeah. You just how pause do you, the bait. How do you like the pause speed? Pause the bait, huh? How do you like the speed of that? You pull right up. That's I like the it. magic. I, I like it. That's the, <laughs> yeah. I know. That's the magic of GPS today. I mean, we pulled up on the spot. Look where we're at. If we didn't have that ability of the mapping program, it would take us a year and a day to find this. Look how far we are offshore. We're fishing a little rock spine. And look what's on it. We pull up that fast. Boom. That's, but all a, these, that's a big boy there, Ryan. That's a, that's a, a really nice big fish. bass. I don't think I can lip him. He's really pinned. Oh, <gasps> that's a tank, man. Ooh. He wolfed that bait. Wolfed it. Wow. So we, we found this spot, but only time on the water will help you identify which of these humps is going to be the most productive. The more cover and structure available on a given spot, the better that spot's going to be. That's the magic of GPS technology, it goes to show you. I mean, we pull up on the spot, boom, you catch one. I mean, we just pulled up, we just put the trolling motor down. <laughs> wow, that is a beauty, man. That is. Look at that pig. Whew. Let's get her back. It's a big brownie, Mr. Deshane. <laughs> I'll take those all day long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a there, big one right oh, yeah. there. Look at that one. That's a big one. Look at that, he's still underneath it. <laughs> it will, nice, man. Yeah. That's wow. the way to do it. That's a big sucker <laughs> there. Oh. Wow. Look at that one. That's, That's a tank. tank dog. Wow. That's one thing. The other thing about this when you got a long profile bait is the rod and reel and line. Line is really critical when you're fishing baits like this because of that multiple hooks and the way you're fishing the bait, you want to use heavy line. I got 17 pound of Suffolk Siege on here. The rod. I got is really critical too. I got like a six and a half foot rod, but you'll notice, look at the action of the rod. It's got a really soft, this is actually a medium action. This is one of our uh, technique specific rods. And I tell you one thing, it's perfect. I mean, I do mean perfect for this activity. It's real soft action. You can see that uh, sort of parabolic arc. And it just, when you got those multiple trouble hooks, whether it be a minnow bait or a topwater bait like that, it helps maintain the hooks in the fish. Once you get them, this guy here is a big, big one. He is a big sucker, and he's got a really bad attitude. Come here, buddy. Oh, man, you are, you've been a workout. Boy, you're, look at him. Oh, come here. Come here, buddy. Look at that guy. Look at that. Oh, man. Beautiful fish. It really is. Boy, did you see the way he came up and launched it? That was it? awesome, yeah.
inner circle. Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360 degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish. So you can see them before they see you. Introducing 360 imaging, only from Hummingbird. For over 65 years, Lund has had an unwavering commitment to build the finest fishing boats on the water. 65 years of dedication, innovation, passion. Lund boats stand up to the elements and the use hardcore anglers put them through season after season. Built by fishermen for fishermen. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You know, it's been amazing how much uh, different braids and fuse lines and uh, fluorocarbon has come onto the scene in the last 10 years. I mean, if you grab any pro's bass rod, chances are it's going to be a braid or fluorocarbon for bass fishing applications. But that isn't true with top water. When you're fishing top water, you want a line that floats, and the answer to that is monofilament, and it's a good abrasion, uh, a resistant monofilament like, like Suffolk Siege. It's got a tough surface. It's got the stretch that monofilament has, which is key, because essentially we are fishing a crankbait on the surface, but it floats. If that line didn't float, then you're going to weigh that bait improperly. The nose of the bait's going to want to dive down. You're going to have a, a bow, kind of a, a parabola under the water that's going to drag the nose of that bait down and it's not going to work right. So definitely spool up with, with monofilament hands down. That's the only line to use with top water unless say you're fishing uh, frogs in dense vegetation with a buoyant bait then you can use braid but, but monofilament's the way to go. A couple other features that make, uh, make this in particular the smoke reel really great for casting is uh, the brake adjustment here. I can just simply dial this brake less all the way down to off or more depending on the weight of the bait. Now we're casting a, a moderately heavy bait but into a pretty stiff uh, headwind at times today. So I've been fishing that break at about 50% and that prevents that spool from, from overrunning. I don't have any issues with backlashing, um, which is pretty amazing. I could put on even a lighter bait like a skitter prop and fish it with 17 pound monofilament on, on a bass rod and cast that into the wind without following. Whoop. Oh. Ooh, blow Ryan, up. Ryan, put the talon down. Put it, hit the talon down. We're, there's a bunch of fish here. You just had that one. I had another one. I missed two. All right, we're pinned. Pinned? Pinned on the rocks. I, I put it in rough water mode, too. That is an awesome feature on the back of this boat. That's the talon. We just pulled up onto a spot. We had four fish roll in a matter of seconds. And uh, Jim said, put the talon down. He's got a control up there too, but I was right here. So drop eight feet of water, put it in rough water mode so it bounces up and down and the boat is pinned. And we can just literally fan cast this whole area or do a 360. Put, pull the talon up, get back on the four tracks and move on. You know, the talon is what it is. It's just a shallow water anchoring system. And you know, at this spring, I've used that thing for so many different fishing situations. Shallow water crappies, catfish, Smallmouth bass, I was fishing a tournament up in Sturgeon Bay and we're fishing real clear water areas in the backs of bays and what you do is I'd move into the bay, drop it down and fan cast. 
catch a number of fish, move a little bit farther. And the thing is, is what you do is minimize the uh, spooking factor. The thing for this uh, situation right now, what we can use it for, because we're, uh, if I let us just blow, we could be moving too fast. Right now, you can see where I'm positioned right here. I'm, I'm on the tip of a point. And what I did is drop the talon down, and I'm not driving over the tops of the fish. And we can fan cast this area, move a little bit further down, drop it down again, fan cast that area. So you can really uh, methodically cover the water in its, boy, it's been a really interesting tool. That's a relatively uh, new sort of boat control device. And I know one thing, I'm sold with it. Oh, right there, just rolled on it. Right at the end of the cast, man. I mean, my spool was really depleted, Jim, right at the end of the cast. <laughs> And you just rolled on it. You just crank down and sweep another, that rod in. Another you're, tank. You're connected. Yeah, nice fish, man. Not, uh, you look bigger from a distance. It's still but a still pretty nice. good one. In most people's books, that's what you call a big brownie. I, I can guarantee you that, even in my book. I like him. It's a beauty. <laughs> I'll take those all day. Yeah. There's a ton of guys out fishing <laughs> walleyes on some main lake structures right now, but I'm glad to be here doing this. You know, every year I get numerous invites to come to this or that church in this part of the country, uh, uh, usually to do a, a seminar, a little bit talk about fishing and share my faith. Uh, some of these churches are very large denominational churches. Some of them are much smaller, interdenominational, non-denominational, and some just strictly independent. Some have thousands of people that I spoke to. Some are just uh, 150 or 100 people at a time. And uh, uh, as I travel the country or speak at a fellowship like this, I always enjoy, if I get an opportunity, to go to a church while I'm out on the road. Uh, it's fascinating to me to see how God uses people in different parts of the world to get his work done. Uh, two churches that come into mind over the years that really are a little bit different than the traditional church uh, one of them years ago was in San Diego when Troy was little. It was called Set Free. And uh, uh, the, the pastor was a biker. They had a, a, skate, a skateboard ministry going on. When I came in there, it was a large uh, a warehouse filled with bleachers. And I mean, there's motorcycles all over the place. The guys that set you, the usher, ushers weighed 280 pounds and look like they've been pumping iron on a regular basis. Really bad looking dudes. And you look at the back of their vest and it says, Jesus loves you. <laughs> I mean, things like this, I love the thing. It was just an on fire church. Another one was in LA, it's called the Oasis. And uh, uh, the pastor's wife there is, is an actress. And many of the people involved in Oasis are involved in, in Hollywood in the motion picture industry. And I happen to be there for a, uh, a Christmas play. You wanna talk about talent at a church Christmas play? When you've seen something like this, you walked out of there going, wow. So, yeah, you know, I just wanted to share with you, God's got his people all over the place doing his work for them. You get a chance, sometime you're on the road, you get a chance to visit a little different church, a little different fellowship than maybe you're used to. Sometimes it could really be eye-opening. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.